Excellent. Starting the live video. Excellent. We're going to wait for a couple minutes. Welcome. This Nobody, is nobody's on yet. Nobody's on yet. There might not be because this is a class. So um, I told people they can come on any time, and we'll see if people come on. And otherwise, we'll do the class, and they can watch it any time. Well, great. Awesome. Is there anybody? <laughs> Wait for a few more minutes. Yeah, there's three people joining. Excellent. Welcome. Welcome. We're going to wait for a couple more minutes and see if anybody else comes on. And then we're, then we're going to get started and make these awesome banners. So much fun. Ann Holmes says hello. Hello, Ann Holmes. How you doing? Why don't you ask if they can hear you? Can you hear me okay? Can you see me okay? Are we clear? I'm rocking back and forth. I don't know why. Um, can you see me okay? Can you hear me? You can respond in the chat. That would be great. Tell that would be good. Yep. You could respond to our um, video tonight in the comment section. If you have any questions while I'm going along and doing the project, please shout out and ask. I'm happy to help you with anything, any questions I can help you with. This is a fun, simple project. You're going to love it. It's okay. awesome. Nan said uh, yes. Perfect. Good, good, good. Excellent. We are not in the store tonight. We're at our house on, in Mount Pleasant. We call it the Potterosa. And I am in my little adorable garden room, which we've been working on fixing up all summer because it, it took a little bit of a beating over the winter, so it needed a little cleaning up and a little freshening up. And this weekend, maybe it's going to get a paint job on the outside. So we're going to kind of just get started. I want to welcome everybody to our Sizzling Summer Series. Say that five times fast and you might get a prize. <laughs> so tonight we have a tenderloin cooking on the grill. And in the amount of time that it takes to cook that tenderloin, you can make a beautiful patriotic banner. So that's what we're going to be making tonight. Um, at first, I was concerned that we weren't going to have enough panels and and fabric to make enough kits to share with everybody but Michael Miller came through for me and sent me the rest of the panels that they had I said however many you have that's what I'll take so um, Rob Appel thank you and Virginia thank you and Michael Miller thank you because now we have plenty plenty of banners to um, to take care of everybody so there's four different styles of these banners. Every kit has enough fabric to make one banner. So there's the um, Faith, Family, and Freedom banner. There is the um, Land of the Free banner with the cute little truck on it. Joe's coming in on it so we can see it a little closer. We got it? Yes. Then there's the God Bless America, Land That I Love and my home sweet home banner so these are a lot of fun we made these today in the store we actually had a class in the store so that was a lot of fun um, and the ladies were able to make it in about two hours so it's not going to take me two hours to make this tonight so we're going to be okay um, so banners are online for purchase or you can stop in the store and pick up a kit so let me show you what is in your kit to make these fabulous banners they are so fun. The ladies were picking up extra kits today to make as Christmas gifts. Great idea. So in your kit, you will find a panel. So one of the four panels. This is the one that um, one of the ones I'll be working on tonight. So you'll get your panel. You'll get two pieces of fabric. One is a little bit smaller than the other, as you can see right here. The larger one goes on the bottom. The smaller one goes on the top. That will be your top band. This one will make the little point that's at the bottom of your banner. And then you will have backing. And so you'll have a piece of fabric for your backing. So those are the four things that you really need to make this, this um, banner. Now in my, in my banner, I put, I, I made some different ones and I put different um, stabilizers in each banner just to see what they ended up looking like. So this one has kind of a deco bond in it. It's a heavier, and I'm going to show it to you in a minute. It's a heavier stabilizer, heavier, heavier interfacing that is fusible on one side. 
Then on these two, I just use some soft and stable, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. That is also a woven, um, a lighter weight interfacing that is fusible on one side as well. And then in this last one, I put some, um, just some scraps of batting that I had left over. So I put a scrap of batting in here, and I fused it using um, um, bone ash. So I fused it to the background using bone ash. So I'll show you how I did all that. So let's get started and make one of these fabulous banners. Um, I'm just going to set this right here for right now. All righty. So step one in making your banner is to cut it down to the right size. So your little banner piece comes pre-cut, but we want to cut it down to about 15 and a half by 19. And I did that because um, that's just the right size to fit in one of my um, garden posts, you know, the little one that comes out and then it has the little thing for hanging. So it's just the right size for that. And it's also the right size for those door hangers that we have at the store as well. So it's just the right size to fit in your doorway. So the first thing I did was take this and I folded it in half. And as you know, I kind of tried to get it pretty well lined up. And as you know, when a panel gets printed, they don't always get printed straight. And we cut them as straight as we could because the, the fabric was rolled on a bolt with all four of these together and we had to cut them apart. So we did the best we could to get them nice and straight. So I'm gonna lay this flat, kind of line up my salvage edge. And then you can see that this is a little bit off. Joe is gonna sneeze. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff blown around in the air out here. So say hi to Joe. Um, so you can tell that, you know, this isn't all lined up. So we're going to get that all nice and straight. And I'm going to use my Creative Grid Ruler, the Big Easy. This is my, oh, this is my absolute favorite ruler. And I'm going to lay my ruler with the seven and a three quarter inches. Here? You could. I'm going to line up seven. Here's seven. And then each of these white lines is a quarter of an inch. So seven and three quarters right along the fold fabric that I laid out. Okay, seven and three quarters. And come over here to go seven and three quarters. Then I'm just going to cut it. That's the great thing about this big easy ruler. I can cut something that's 15 inches wide with this ruler by just folding it in half like that. So, amazing. I know, it is amazing. And you saw it didn't move or anything. So we don't need that. So then we're going to cut this down to 19 inches and I'm going to go from this way all the way up to here so I just kind of eyeballed it I have it at about I can't really see what this here okay um, 19 inches is here so I have it at about this one is about an inch and three quarters from the top of my writing here and this one's about an inch so I think I'll go about an inch and a half and you can eyeball it if you want more of a border on the bottom than you do the top. You can make it longer by just leaving this on here where you should have enough backing to do that. So I line this up so my 19 is going to be here. And that's about an inch and a half down from the lowest point of my border here or my panel here. And from the top of the writing here, it's about an inch and a half. So then I'm going to take and I'm just going to spin around here. And I'm going to cut this part off. And I'm going to flip this, line the 19 up with the line that I just cut. With this little piece, I just, I just cut this, so that's nice and straight. And then I'm going to take one of the long lines and I'm going to line that up right along the fold. Just like that. And then I'm going to cut this off down here. So now I have it about 19 by 15 and a half. Ta-da! Easy peasy. Cute, right? Now we're ready to continue. You can do this, you got it. All righty. So the second step is then to take the top and the bottom pieces that are in your kit and sew them onto your banner, your banner piece that you just cut. So remember the top piece is smaller, the bottom piece is larger. Okay, piece cake, got it, right? Excellent. Now I kind of took it and I trimmed it off. 
I didn't trim the top and the bottom to the exact size of the banner ahead of time. I just sewed it on and now I'm going to trim it off straight and even. Take my ruler, throw this down. I, when I do this, I'm going to line up, I'm going to line up the edge, oops, let's just slip it around here, there we go. Okay, I line up the edge of my ruler with the edge of my panel. And then I'm, line, I'm picking another line that's going through here and I'm lining it up with my seam line so I get a nice right angle. So I do that and I'm going to cut that off. All right, then I'm going to come down and do the same thing on this side on the bottom. Line up the edge of my ruler with the side of my panel. Line up one of the black lines that runs through here with my seam line. Then I'm just going to take this and trim it off. And I will repeat on the other side. Just like that. You know what, I'm gonna quick, I know this is not gonna be hot enough for my, my interfacing. Okay, quick turn on that iron again. And so now I'm repeating, I'm doing the top. And the bottom. This ruler makes it so easy. You've got so much space to line things up to make sure they're straight. And you can see when I'm cutting, look, I can just put my finger on here and cut. That ruler does not move. Love it. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep this. So now I have everything trimmed off nice and easy. I have my top on. I have the bottom on. And I'm ready to add whatever type of interfacing I'm going to use. Now you could just leave it this way and it'll be just it'll be just soft and that's fine too you don't have to put anything in here so the one that's the stiffest is the deco bob deco bond and that's this so you can see it's kind of thick it's kind of you can see it's kind of crunchy kind of thick it's shiny on one side plain on the other and it's almost like a heavy kind of piece of paper um, the other one that i used is um, shape flex and that's like this this is lighter it just gives your fabric some body and it's iron on as well irons on that's really bumpy on one side smooth on the other and it's a woven interfacing and then the other thing oh we got a great big long streamer on that one and the other thing i used was batting so you can just pick whatever you would like to put into your banner so for this one i'm going to use the little bit stiffer stuff. So I lay this on my ironing pad with the shiny side facing up. Yep, shiny side facing up. And we were talking about this today in class. You do, I did not put, I did not put the interfacing in the top band part. So I just kind of ran it right along the seam that's along the top and lined this up on here. I, it's nice if you have a little bit bigger ironing space than I have out here, but that is just fine. Now, when I put this on, well, it looks like it's hot. We'll see if this is hot enough. I start and I start in the center of my project and I just hold it on there for a second or two and move my iron. And then I move out because some people say, oh, I got, I got a bubble or I got a wrinkle. But what you want to do is just start from the center and work to the outside and then it will stick so you can see it's starting to stick I didn't get real close to my edge and I ironed throughout the whole piece to get it all stuck on there I'm not using steam sometimes I'll have steam in my iron and it works with that as well but this I didn't put any iron in my little iron to come out here tonight and it's working just fine. We just want this to give it a little stability so it stays nice and firm and looks nice and crisp in your doorway or outside hanging or above your mantle. Could go on your mantle. Hanging a window. Wherever. So at this point, we're actually almost halfway done doesn't take long to do this at all. Alrighty. Once I get this all ironed on, 
And I'm not going to fuss with it too much, but we're going to be fine. But start in the center and work your way out. That way you won't get bubbles and you won't get little wrinkles. All righty. I'm just going to call it quits on that right now. Now I'm going to trim off the excess stabilizer. And if I was doing this, I would do exactly the same thing if I was using batting and bone ash. I would lay my batting down on my ironing board. I would sprinkle the bone ash onto the batting. And then I would lay the piece that I'm going to um, by top of my fabric or the top of my quilt or the top of my banner in this case on top of that and press through the fabric not the other way around because the batting would be too thick for that heat to get all the way through and really get that to make that to make that stick so now I'm just trimming off this extra alrighty ta-da okay So now you can see, so here's fabric without anything on it. Now you can see what the fabric looks like with some stabilizer on it. Really gives it some body, makes it hang nice. All righty, now comes the fun part. Now we are ready to add the point to the bottom of our banner. This is super easy. You're going to take your banner and you're going to fold it in half again, just like you did when you were going to cut it um to make to cut this down you're going to fold it in half line up your seam line it's not line up there we go line up your seam line and the one thing that i didn't bring out here was a pencil but that's okay we're going to be fine so you're going to take and you're going to measure down from this seam two inches down so from this seam, you're going to measure two inches down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, it does, this is not a perfect science. You're not matching seams. So I'm just kind of lining this up with a, with a line here. And I'm going to go one, two, <clears throat> because I don't have a pencil. If I was doing this, I'd line my ruler up and put a little tick mark with a pencil or my Frixion pen right where that two inch line was. So I'm going to line up my, pen, my ruler here with that two inch mark right there. And I'm just gonna pivot till it hits that point down there. So I'm about two inches here. If it's a little less, if it's a little more, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So from two inches here all the way down to that point, I'm gonna cut right there, get rid of that. And I have my point. You can, I think in my instructions, I told you to like cut this piece and then cut your two inch to um, cut your point, but I think it's easier if you sew this on here first and then cut this point because you will get this right exactly in the middle, which is where you want it to be. If you cut it first and it's a little off when you're sewing it on, then your point might not be in the middle. But this makes your point right, in, right smack in the center and look at how cute that is. Really, really cute. Okay, now we've got only a couple more steps before we have our banner done. Now we're ready to put the back on. Now we found that the easiest way to do this today, we did it a couple different ways and I did it a couple different ways when I was making up the pattern, but really the easiest way is just to take your backing and lay it on top of your banner, right sides together and you're gonna have extra here. And if you look down here, don't panic. You're going to start panicking. And you're going to say, I don't have enough backing for the back of my, my banner. Well, you do. Because what's going to happen is we're going to end up, this top band is going to flip around to the back. Okay, so you can see how this top band is going to flip right around to the back. And I'll show you a little bit more how that's going to work. So I've got this right sides together you can pin it you can binder clip it i'm just gonna go for it jim gave me this cute little machine we've been using it and it is really fun it does a great little straight stitch it's a great a great little machine to bring to class there we go oops go okay to hit it and 
Off we go. I'm going to turn it just a snudge, and Joe can get in there and take a picture. There we go. Get in and on the action. There we go. Usually I don't do this. Usually you don't need to see me sew a seam, but today you're going to watch me sew a little bit of a seam here. Just because. Okie dokie. This machine is great. It has a needle threader. It has an automatic cutter. Love it. It has a regular stop and start. It's lightweight to bring to class. It's a great um, little machine for beginners. And you know, he's got machines oh, that are more sophisticated and a little less sophisticated. Whatever you're looking for. He can, you know he can hook you up. So I still bet at a quarter inch seam. And now I'm just pressing the backing towards the band. So on this one I pressed, on this little seam I pressed the band toward the banner. Doesn't really matter, you could go either direction. And this one I pressed toward the banner. Okay. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it right sides together. I'm going to flip this over right sides together and then I'm going to nest my little seams together that are right here I'm going to get a binder clip I think that will be helpful okay I'm going to grab a binder clip and kind of clip it right here so I'm lining up this these two seams can you see those right there the two seams from the band that's across the top. So this seam to that seam. Everybody doing okay? And any questions as we're going along? This is pretty simple, isn't it, girls? You can do this. You can do this. Super simple. This would even be a great. This would even be a great um, project to do with the daughters and the granddaughters because all you're doing is sewing straight seams. You're just sewing straight seams. So okay. So here we go. So now you can see how this is laying nice and flat right along, get my scissors out of the way, right along my backing. And now you can see that there's plenty of backing here once we folded the, the top band over. Now I'm going to take it and I am going to trim this off. Now I'm going to trim it even. I'm going to get my binder clip out of the way so I don't ruin my blade. Don't you hate that when you run over a pin or a binder clip or something and you ruin the blade? Okay. Right here. Trim that off. Oops, I didn't trim very straight, but that's okay. Right over here. And back up, and I'm going to grab that binder clip before I do that. So now I think you kind of get what's going to happen next, don't you? Really simple next. Really simple last step. One last, well, kind of a last step. Okay, so I've got this all trimmed. At this point, I would binder clip it or I would pin it all the way around. So now when you stitch, what you're going to do is you're going to start Stitch a start or stop, depending on what side you start on. You're going to start stitching right at the bottom of that band. You'll stitch a quarter of an inch going all the way down, across the bottom to your point, and then all the way up, you're going to stop about four inches from the top up here. Okie dokie. You're going to, okie dokie. You're going to do that. So I can do that for you right now. And show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to kind of give it a couple pins just to hold it in place. And I think we can pop around this pretty quick. Oops, I think I'm going to put another one here just to make it go fast. So you can see I'm almost done with this. And I don't know how much time it took me, but not very much time. You can do a whole bunch of these really super fast. They are so fun to do. All righty. Okay, so I'm going to start up here. I like to backstitch at the beginning and the end. And this machine has a nice little backstitch. And then we're going to just crank right away. 
This foot has a little guide on it, which makes life even easier. So if you're a beginner sewer or you have a granddaughter or daughter who's a beginner sewer, this is a great machine. And this little foot that has the, this little quarter inch foot that has a quarter inch guide on it is a great machine. I have to do just another stitch or two. That's hard because I'm not sitting quite right up to it, but that is okay. Then we're going to stitch down to the point. It stitches pretty fast, too. I'm really cranking. This is, I think, on high. <laughs> Okie dokie. Back up to this edge. Get my binder clip out of there. If you don't have a set of binder clips in your stash of great pieces of equipment, you need to get some because they are really fun and fast and easy to use. Because sometimes, especially through this thick stuff, it's hard to pin. And a binder clip goes really fast. And if you don't know and you haven't used binder clips, if you look at your binder clip on the bottom, it's on the, especially on these, it's clear on the bottom and straight and the top is curved. And that's that way so that you can just take your binder clip, lay it on a surface, like this sewing machine, on a surface, oops, and slide it in, let it go. And then you can stitch right up to it, pinch it with one finger and pull it out. Just, oops, I better stop here. Um, remember, we wanted to start and start at the top of the band and then stop about four inches from the top over here. So I'm gonna kind of back stitch on that a little bit because we need a little bit of space for turning. All righty, that's all there is to that. Now, here's a little tip. Okay, that my iron is still on, so that's good. Um, we were talking about that today because some of the girls were saying that they don't like irons that automatically shut off. And I said, I do. Those little, the little Panasonic um, um, cordless irons that we have, they stay on for quite a while. So I, most of the time I'm sewing something and I come back to that iron and it's still on. But then when I'm all done sewing, I don't have to worry about turning it off at the end. All right, so I'm gonna have Joe kind of come in on this so you can kind of see exactly what we're gonna do. So most of the time you would take this and turn it and then you have to tuck these little edges in. Pause for a second here. There's a question on what kind of machine this is. This is an Elna 560. So you can talk to Jim about these little machines. Is there, don't ask me how much they cost. I don't know about how much they cost, how much sewing almost machines almost cost. Free. Almost free. <laughs> More than nothing, less than, oh my God. Okay, um, so I, I don't really know. Because if you ask Jim how much, um, how much a batik is per yard, he won't know that answer either. So um, talk to Jim. He's got some, he's got, he, you know he's got machines He's got machine. Boy, does he have. Have you seen all the machines we have? They're awesome. So he's got a machine that's just right for you, and he'll hook you up with the right one. But nice little machine, great little. He's got several different kinds, um, very similar to this, that are great to bring to class and to retreats. At any rate, so now um, what we need to do is we're going to turn this right side out, but then, you know, we have to tuck this little edge in, and that's always a pain in the neck. Okay, so Joe's going to come up close. <laughs> He's like, I am? Okay. So if you can see my stitching right here, I'm going to take this little scissors and I'm going to clip right up to that stitching. And I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. Well, I'm going backwards. But I'm doing the same thing over on this side. Then I'm going to take my iron. I'm not going to fuss too much with this tonight. But at this point, it's a lot easier to fold this back. I'm going to grab my iron. To fold this back and make a nice straight seam on this. I'm going to be fussing with this a little bit. There we go. We're going to make this nice and straight. Press it here. Okay, okay, I'm not doing it too straight because I'm a little bit too low. And then we'll flip it over and we'll do the same thing on this side and kind of line up this, this edge with the other edge so that once you turn it right side out, you don't have to try to get all this tucked in. There we go. All of this is going to be tucked and pressed and turned before you turn it right side out. 
makes it a lot easier than trying to tuck it in and get that smooth from the outside later. So I'm going to give that a little press. Hold it on there for a couple seconds. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. And at Patchwork Party coming up, I have a little tool that's going to help you do this a lot easier, but I didn't bring it home with me tonight. We just got them in. It's going to be one of our nifty notions that's going to be on sale at Patchwork Party. Remember that Patchwork Party is the second Monday of the month at 6 o'clock, Facebook Live. So we're going to do the same thing over here with this. And, ooh, I think I can put that down for one minute. One, two, three. As I burn my ironing mat. Okay. Nope, it's still good. <laughs> I'm like, faster, faster, faster. <laughs> there we go. So these are nicely turned. They're lined up nice and straight. Now I'm going to turn this right side out. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Okay, grab it. What I do is I come down low, I come all the way down to the bottom corner and I kind of grab it and I pull it through. Any questions so far on what we're doing, how we're doing it? It's a fun, easy project, isn't it? This is the fun part when you're standing here pulling this all apart. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So don't forget that we're going to have Christmas in July coming up um, July 21st, I believe is the correct date. Down below in the feed, there should be a link to purchase any of these kits. So you should be able to just click on those, that link and purchase your kits if you'd like to. We're happy to ship them or you can stop in the store. Jill is asking if you need to clip the corners. <coughs> I didn't clip the corners. You can clip the corners if you want to. I didn't. If you used batting, I would probably clip the corners. But we didn't clip them today and they popped up just nice. So nice. But what I didn't do on this, and you'll see when I do this, what I didn't do because I quick stitched these and I wasn't fussing when I did it, but I'll show you what you, what you don't want to do and what you will want to do. So I didn't clip these. I did this at a quarter of an inch and these with my nice um, point turner, it turns out, look at that, beautiful. And I didn't clip them. You can if you want to, but sometimes you end up clipping them too close and then your point turner goes through. These usually, this point turner usually doesn't, but because <clears throat> it has that nice ball on the end, but it, this works out really nice. There we go. Ta-da! Now we're just going to flip this other side out. And you can see, even without coming along to press it, how nice this little top already is lining up. So this is my little, you can see how nice that is already, and I haven't even done anything to it. And you don't have to try to tuck it in and get it all lined up, so I would come along and I would press this all nice and flat. See, I didn't trim, and these are all nice and pointed, and the same on this side. Now, the only thing I can say on this side is look what happened here. When I stitch this, I didn't back stitch at the beginning and the end of my little seams and they started to pull apart. So when you sew these on and this on, make sure that you back stitch at the what beginning at the end. What on? The bottom okay. and your top band okay. on both your front panel and your back panel. Because okay. it was starting to pop off a little bit. Okay. I can fix it, but. So back stitch there and there, and this would have fallen just really nicely in place, which you can tell that it already is, even though it's popping apart a little bit there. And Fabish said it's the, that is the best point turner ever. Best point turner ever. We have these in the shop. Um, several reasons why I like it. Some point turners you have and they roll around. This is kind of squared off. It's squared off so it doesn't slide in your hand. It's nice and long, and it's got a little ball at the end, so when you point, so when you push that point out, it doesn't go through the corner or through your little point out there. It doesn't go through your fabric. Perfect. You're going to love these. Um, so at this point, I would press this all really nice, nice, nice. Um, you can do any kind of stitching on this that you want. 
Um, what I what I do is I come along and I top stitch here, I stitch in the ditch here, top stitch back up here, and in doing so, I close up that four inch um, hole that I made for turning. Now I leave, I stop stitching at the top of the band so that I have a place for my rod to go through. Okay, at that point, yeah, fun. At that point, you could stitch around all these. You could do some decorative stitching. You could just leave it plain just like this, and they're awesome. So four different styles, a lot of fun. It took me what? 33 minutes, a half an hour, a half an hour, half an hour to make. <clears throat> Any questions? <coughs> Excuse me. Next week, we will be making, wait, right here. Next week, we will be making these little tote bags. These are done with, by using um, printed interfacing. So this is next week's project. So join me next Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, or if you have time and you want to, you can make these in the store with us at 1 o'clock. So join us. Thank you so much. If you need anything, give us a call. Bye.